Nagasaki University Hospital says that at least 40 percent of staff sent to Fukushima Prefecture to assist earthquake and tsunami survivors had received internal radiation exposure from the crippled nuclear plant. The hospital checked staffers and medical experts sent to Fukushima by Nagasaki's prefectural government. They spent around a week in March assisting local government offices and medical institutions. The hospital says radioactive iodine was detected in the bodies of 34 or about 40 percent of 87 examinees. Some were also found to have been exposed to radioactive cesium. Neither substance occurs naturally in the human body. However, officials at the hospital insist that the level of radioactive contamination is very low and poses no health concern. <laughs> The survey shows that people in Fukushima Prefecture must live among high levels of radiation for a long period of time. Therefore, Fukushima residents should also be checked for levels of internal radiation exposure. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it has successfully lowered the temperature of the spent fuel pool in the number two reactor building. Tokyo Electric Power Company said on Thursday that after it started operating a new cooling system on Tuesday, the temperature in the number two pool quickly dropped by 30 degrees. The temperature dropped faster than we anticipated, from 70 degrees down to about 40. So we will now inspect the inside of the reactor building to check the current condition there. TEPCO expected it would take about one month to lower the temperature to the current level. In the number two reactor building, high radiation levels and steam released by the storage pool have been hampering recovery efforts. If the inspection goes well, TEPCO hopes to install filtering systems that will remove radioactive substances from the cooling water. The company also plans to start operating similar cooling systems at the number one and three storage pools in June and in the number four reactor building in July. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, plans to plug all potential leaks of radioactive water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant by the end of June. TEPCO submitted its plan to the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency after finding that highly radioactive water was flowing into the sea via concrete maintenance pits. The water apparently was coming from the turbine buildings of the plant's number two and three reactors. The utility says it identified five concrete tunnels and 39 pits around the plant as possible points from which radioactive water could reach the sea. The firm says it has filled the, all the tunnels and some of the pits with concrete. It says it will finish the work at 17 of the pits and repair cracked seawalls by the end of June. Italy will hold a referendum on June 12th and 13th to decide whether to accept nuclear power. On Wednesday, Italy's top court ruled that the country's citizens can vote in the referendum as scheduled. Italy decided to abandon nuclear power following the Chernobyl accident in the former Soviet Union in 1986. Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi had pledged to revive nuclear power to reduce dependence on foreign oil and natural gas. Opposition forces called for a national referendum on the issue. However, in the wake of the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi power plant, Berlusconi froze his initial plan, apparently to avoid holding the referendum in view of a growing anti-nuclear public sentiment. The referendum is expected to influence the nuclear energy policies of other European nations as well. 
Officials in Fukushima Prefecture have decided to check the internal radiation exposure of some of their residents, people who live near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and areas where radiation levels are high will be screened. Fukushima Daiichi has been releasing radioactive material into the environment for nearly three months now. There are mounting concerns among locals about the impact radiation could have on their health. Fukushima authorities have already decided to conduct checks on all citizens, but they will now assess residents' internal exposure to radiation from breathing and eating. A device called a whole body counter will be used to precisely measure radiation exposure. Right now, Fukushima Prefecture has one of the devices, so it can only screen about 10 people a day. It is urging research institutes and other facilities outside the prefecture to help them if they have the device. Fukushima officials are also studying whether they can retrieve two devices from the town of Okuma, which lies inside the no-go zone around the nuclear plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency has called on Japan to report the latest, most detailed information on the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The IAE explained the current status of the accident to its member nations during a meeting in Vienna on Thursday. Deputy Director General Dennis Flory told reporters that so far, information received from Japan regarding the accident has been adequate. However, he stressed that the latest information must be provided at the ministerial level meeting later this month, which will focus on the accident. Japan will have a role in explaining the accident and what are its very first uh, findings. There is a need to rebuild the confidence. Flory said the information should include the status of the nuclear reactors and why highly contaminated water is leaking into the sea. He also said countries must follow common safety standards in order to rebuild confidence in the nuclear energy industry and IAEA standards should be their benchmark. Well, Japan's ruling Democratic Party used its majority in the lower house to vote down a no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Naoto Khan and his cabinet. Well, ahead of the no-confidence vote, Khan announced he would step down after achieving some post-disaster recovery, including the stabilization of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. <laughs> Four hundred forty-five members of the 480-seat lower house voted on the motion on Thursday afternoon. The vote was 152 in favor and 293 against. There were 33 abstentions. Three opposition parties, including the main Liberal Democratic Party, jointly submitted the motion on Wednesday. They have been criticizing Khan and his cabinet for the way they have handled the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and the recovery following the March 11th disaster. The DPJ has controlled the lower house since it took power in 2009. If more than 82 Democrats had voted against Khan and his cabinet, he would have had to resign along with his ministers or call a general election. Khan has only held the job of prime minister since June 8th of last year.